let's transition uh, because a lot of people are wondering what's happening with 25 quarterback recruiting on the heels of Jaden Davis uh, announcing his commitment to Michigan, the commitment that he first made in November, wanted to announce in December. The coaching uncertainty led him to delay it until March. All right. Uh, in that time, new quarterback coaches come in and Kirk Campbell, Bryce, and every single guy that comes to campus is saying the same thing. They absolutely love the dude. So, of course, we talked a lot about Bryce Underwood loving him, right? But he's not the only 25 quarterback, and he is the one 25 quarterback, though, who it was very clear that getting a 24 highly ranked guy was going to impact. And so maybe Michigan's chances might be a little better with the other 25 quarterbacks moving forward. It's not to say you stop with, with Bryce. He's the number one quarterback in, in 25, but Michigan is also on the number two and number three quarterbacks in 25 as well, and both made their way to campus recently. Yeah, and I just want to piggyback off that. I think, you know, with the Jane Davis recruitment, Kirk kind of entered that one in later. I mean, obviously he was a, you know, analyst at the time, but that wasn't his, he didn't have his fingerprints over that recruitment. You can see kind of his game plan going forward in terms of quarterback recruiting. He's not putting his eggs in one basket. You know, he's kind of laying them out there, but he's shooting for the stars. And you mentioned two guys, Cutter Bowling, George McIntyre, uh, 24-7 sports composite number two and three ranked quarterbacks, along with obviously Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback. So the one, two, and three quarterbacks, they're all visited in less than a week span this spring. George McIntyre was up for the spring game. He loved his time, really connected him and his family with Kirk Campbell. And then obviously Cutter Bowley, I think that's a recruitment Michigan fans should be more closely watching. He's been up four times, you know, so he's seen a lot. I know he's a huge, huge fan of Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh is personally recruiting him as well. I know that for a fact. Um, this is a guy that has a big arm. They really like everything he has to offer. Different type of um, skill set and body right now. I mean, he's 6'4", 200, I think, 5 pounds, where George is more like this lanky, Thin kid at six foot five, um, 175 pounds. So he's got to fill out. But both guys are elite at the position. They're really talented, and they've been up to campus. And the you know the common denominator with all these visits so far, Sam, is Kirk Campbell, and he's been a home run hire. It seems like at least from the very get go. And the biggest question will be the J Jaden Davis effect. Is this going to play a role? And so far, at least for the two. Ladder guys, I just talked about in terms of not Bryce, but it doesn't seem like that's going to play a role when they're considering Michigan at least. Yeah. So as we talk about this, though, I, we made this point on maybe the last episode that I don't expect in any way, shape, or form for Michigan to let up on on Bryce Underwood. I mean, he's right down the street right? Uh, his relationship with Kirk Campbell is off to a great start. And that theme is so consistent. I mean, it's too consistent to not be something that I think you're going to be able to count on moving forward. You don't, there's no warm up period with Kirk Campbell. I mean, guys get here and they like him immediately. So that is an asset. And you got to feel like on the strength of that relationship, maybe, maybe down the line that, you know, five, six months from now, uh, if they were thinking about, ah, we really don't want to follow a 24 big timer, maybe he thinks so highly of Kirk Campbell that he's, you know what, this is a this is a different circumstance and it's up the road. Or to another point that we've made, hey, maybe it never becomes a thing that he can move past, but he goes someplace else and realizes, I want to come back home. That's why you keep recruiting. You keep recruiting until the bell, even if it looks like uh, it won't ring for you. But Another thing to kind of point out, and I this actually didn't come out in the interview uh, that will be up if you haven't seen it already over on the MichiganInsider.com, check it out. But the interview with uh, Jeremiah Davis, who after a year of talking, he actually got on camera this time. He was really, really strong. So definitely don't miss it. One of the things he said off camera, though, he was asking about Bryce Underwood. He said, what's up with what's up with the with the Underwood kid? And I said, well, I just don't think now that Jaden's in the fold, I don't think that that is, 
you know, that, that is going to be a recruitment that continues to trend up the way that it had been. Like, they might still be in it, but it was looking like they were number one with a bullet. I don't know that that's going to be the case anymore. He said, well, I, I hope I hope that's, I hope you're wrong about that. You know, we hope Michigan gets them. You know, we want them to get as many, as many good prospects, regardless of position as possible, even at quarterback. Because, I mean, you're going to have competition wherever you go. And so we hope he comes in and competes as well. And so this is the that's why I say you, you never know. It could be the, a situation where he helps you recruit Bryce Underwood down the line. I don't know how much impact it would have, but I, I say that to say this is a this is the the kind of recruit that is gonna help you in in ways in which maybe you don't even anticipate. And this might be one of them helping them recruit 25 quarterbacks. And maybe it won't work with with Bryce Underwood. That's just who he mentioned specifically, Steve. But these other guys, I would don't be surprised if you see Jaden Davis helping recruit other quarterbacks too. You talk about a best case scenario. I mean, I think if you're a 25, like if you're in Underwood's camp and you have the the five star 24 quarterback recruiting on Michigan's behalf for, I mean, I I almost I got to think that's as big a plus as the coaches continuing to recruit a kid. I mean, because you would think, you know, in a normal situation, it'd be the total opposite. Right. And and that's not to say that kids shy away from competition or anything, but it's just, you know, everybody wants to see the field as, as soon as possible, you know, and, and you know, a, Bri- a talent like Bryce Underwood is a guy that is probably like, much like Dante Moore last year, probably expecting to see the field almost immediately wherever he ends up. You know, so to have your right to have your twenty four quarterback open to actively recruiting other elite quarterbacks is like, you know, Jim Harbaugh's got to be like well, talk about a, that's a Harbaugh guy right there, yeah, right? I understand it was unsolicited. This was sure. Jeremiah Davis asking, "What's up?" It's like, oh, and then saying disappointed when I said I don't think that Michigan's going to be as high with him. He's like, "Oh man, that's unfortunate." Wait a minute, that we hope that that changes. We hope that. You know, that's a kid that Michigan winds up landing. You're right. It is a best case scenario. Cause here's the other thing. I'm I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna highlight Ohio State a little bit here. Right. But you look at how they've recruited quarterbacks big time the last few years, right? They've they've stacked they've stacked quarterbacks recently, like they stack receivers. Difference being you can play all those receivers, at least the majority of them. But hey, you might have a situation where you got Olave and Garrett Wilson and, uh, you know, Smith and Jigba. And Jamison Williams is like, well, wait a minute. I'm a five-star too. And he and he just moves on. I mean, I think that that is kind of the approach that you have to take. You know, you, you recruit as much firepower as you can. You let them compete. And then you understand, Bryce, that in the day and age of the transfer portal, that some of those guys are going to – I said this last year with Kate and, and J.J. J.J. is such a Michigan team guy, right? And he was saying, I'm in Michigan for the long haul. But I'm telling you my opinion on the matter is, if he had lost that job last year, I would not have been surprised to see J.J. McCarthy in the transfer portal, just like we just looked up and we saw Kate McNamara in the transfer portal. That's just how it goes these days. You aren't going to have to – starting caliber quarterbacks riding it out for the entirety of their time if they're close close together so you know knowing that go recruit as much firepower as you can let them compete and may the best man wins and the other one is going to go find another spot where he can win that's just the nature of the beast these days it's just college football in general you know with nil and with the transfer portal i mean as much as you would love to stack and you you know back in the day you would have guys at least three years to four. And then, you know, there is that they might transfer, but I mean, now guys are in the transfer portal before the even season starts before even spring camp starts. So you can't worry about that. You got to look for the best of the best. Michigan's doing that approach. They have a wide net. I mean, obviously we named off those three, but there's other guys. They're still looking at stone Saunders from Pennsylvania. He was the Pennsylvania Gatorade player of the year. He threw for 54 touchdowns. He's a guy that I know he's been up to campus several times that Michigan likes. Uh, Keldon Ryan from yeah, Texas. Have, by the way, Gene so, 
Gene Hankerson, one of our correspondents, going to be over at Bishop McDevitt checking him out. So there you go. That, that's one I, I apologize for not mentioning Stone Saunders. Yeah, man, he made his way to campus too. Uh, Bryce, what do you remember about what Stone had to say? He I, make a guess what he said. <laughs> Same for Campbell, right? Exactly. So I, I just I really like their approach to cycle. And I think the biggest thing, too, and most encouraging after hearing you talk about it, is Jane Davis is open to any guy coming in. He's not going to almost negative recruit Michigan and say, ah, I don't really want another five-star following me. Why don't you guys find a project quarterback? So I'm like, no, 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 no. He wants the best of the best following him because he's trying to make this team as good as it's going to get. You know, and the other thing, too, is we saw this one play. That's all it takes. Guy gets hurt. And that's that's your message to someone like that. You don't want to come in playing. Well, if he gets hurt, he's down. And you already mentioned Ohio State. They won a national title with their third string quarterback. They sure so. did. They sure did. And their their backup quarterback a few years later went to LSU and won a, <laughs> won yeah. a national championship, right? I mean, that's how they've been doing it. And that's not that's that's just how I think you that's the most likely path to success in my opinion There's too much riding on on a guy if you just have one i mean look at look at how this is a different um dynamic i mean wisconsin is not ohio state wisconsin is not michigan but graham mertz was the best quarterback recruit in the history of the program they put everything on him they changed their offensive philosophy because of him and their coach got fired because of him, too. I'm not not to disparage the kid, but he put so much on that one guy. And when that one guy didn't work, it blew up the program. Quarterback is too crucial a position to just have one, to just have one big timer. You got to have – I mean, look, quiet is kept. Michigan in a very precarious situation this, this year, fellas. Very precarious situation this year. Absolutely. Uh, J.J. McCarthy – I mean, man, I, I, they need to put some kind of, some kind of, you know, cloak. I don't know, you know, some kind of special fabric on his jersey and some bubble kind wrap. Of, I mean, yeah, you know, ball kind of bubble wrap around of a force field, something to keep this man healthy. Because if he, if something happens, guys, uh, they are in more trouble than most teams right now because, or or a lot of teams, I should say, most teams than a lot of teams. Uh, because the, the backup scenario is far from being determined, very clearly. Yeah, no, Wisconsin's running the air raid now. <laughs> like that's how that's how big that's how much things have changed uh Ooh. due to that quarterback situation. But but yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a lot like you know, playing cards where you want to be holding the you have a better chance to win when you're holding the best hand you can possibly have. You you have a better chance to win. That's what, like you, you said, what Ohio State's done at receiver. Uh, geez, I even forgot about Jamison Williams. That's how good they've recruited at receiver. You know, I mean, yeah, it's like they just got a five-star. They just got Mylon Graham out of Indiana the other day, and it's like uh, people on our board are like, you know, ho-humming because, well, Michigan will out-tough them, and it's like, man, but there's no way that that position is going to be – is not going to be a huge plus for them no for way. the foreseeable future, right? That's why they recruit that way. Like it's, there's no downside to it. So, uh, so yeah, if you're Michigan, you know, yeah, you gotta, you gotta put all your chips in ever in all these big time baskets. Uh, there's really no downside to doing that. Uh, that's where if you're a good eval, if you're good at evaluating, that's where that can come into play. If those top, top guys don't happen to come to fruition or work out. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, about the yeah, the quarterback situation in general. Yeah, JJ, they need to like uh, dip him in gold or something, like something that won't break, you know, or try to get out to such a try to push it to get out to a big lead enough where he's only got to play half a game for the first six weeks of the season or something. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's just a yeah, there's obviously a ton riding on him there. So, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, no reason not to be going all out for the best guys in the country. And like I said before, having your your prize quarterback in, in the 24 class uh, advocating or him and his camp advocating to pick up more top guys at this at the same position. I mean, you can't ask for any more than that. You sure can. And just to emphasize the point that you just made, Steve, in passing, but let's highlight. They should be running up the score as often as they can. I mean, if if you can get 
your starters, and especially JJ, play one series in the third quarter and be done, man, they need to be trying to do that in a big way. Uh, because at, not just to work the backups to get them some some experience, which is a, a big deal, but just to lower the injury risk. The less he plays, less chance there is he's injured, at least to me, right? So uh, hopefully that's something they can do. Looking at the schedule, they should be in position to be blowing some of these teams out early in the third quarter. So we can we can hope that that works out that way. 